for the 20th anniversary of the two towers, when you're deciding what environment should you choose, of course it has to be Helm's Deep. It's such an important part of the film. It's where the climactic battle happens, so it was really a no-brainer when it comes to environment pieces. It was really important to us that we get that iconic moment of the Battle of Helm's Deep and for this collectible, just that moment just before. Leonard Ellis has been running our model making department of our collectibles for many years. And when we came to do Helm's Deep, it was just so obvious that Leonard should look after it in its entirety, doing the digital sculpting, the physical model making, and then the plaster scene sculpting over the top of that. And it's created a piece that feels so united in all of these components and so special in the beauty of the piece. When doing the model, I did the castle digitally and I was fortunate to have some of the plans from the original set to draw from. Of course, we have built the miniature of Helm's Deep once before, and with that reference, and also the photographs from the art department set construction, Leonard had the most extraordinary collection of reference. Helm's Deep has, of course, been there for hundreds of years, and we wanted that ageing to be represented in the model. So Shanti did a lot of work on the digital castle when it came off the printer to give it that hand-worked human touch. It's a way to sort of blend the handcraft with the new digital technologies to get a result that's sort of better than both of them. As a model maker, you're always on the lookout for bits and pieces. So when things were a little bit dry over summer, I got some clay from the garden and it just happened to have an awesome texture and color that I thought would work perfectly for the environment around the castle which was done using traditional model making and sculpting methods. One of the challenges with creating it on a smaller scale was of course that it is a lot of rock. So we had to try to keep it visually interesting because you can't just use the same rock or have boring rock. Rock has a lot of texture to it. There's a lot of little nuances that people take for granted. The interior environments are as important to the world of Helm's Deep as the exteriors. So it was important to us that we found every ability to put in as many of these environments. Of course we had to have Theoden's Hall. That is quite an important part in the film. And it was a great opportunity to add the glittering caves because although they seem such a short part of the film, they do make up a large part of the story. A really cool addition that never made it to film was the stables. These were a huge vaulted structure that Alan Lee had done a concept of, so it was really nice to include that. It's really important, of course, that when people look into the interiors, they can see the detail that Leonard has put in. Therefore, with the use of small LEDs, we lit them. The subtle lighting that we've added to this piece is important because it showcases that tranquil moment, the flickering of the torches, the hints of the sunlight passing through, the tower with just that slight light and beacon in it showing promise all before the chaos comes from the battle. This is a big collectible. It feels like the scale and the strength of the actual environment and it definitely feels like a beautiful representation of that extraordinary place. One of the coolest things about Holmes Deep is it's a 360 degree sculpture so any angle you look at it you get to see the imposing nature of the environment and as you get closer and closer, you see all the details that we've added in that really give personality to the piece. All the set pieces that you expect to see in a collectible are there. So we have the little tiny door that Aragorn and Gimli sneak out of, and we got the interior of Theoden's Hall, as well as the little side entrance which leads down to the stable and the exits through to the Glittering Cave the little culvert where the berserker runs to set off the explosion that brings the wall down. The Hornberg modelled in such beautiful detail. The causeway where the Urukai march up with the shields above their heads. It's all there, it's all been modelled with exquisite detail, perfect replication of the original. I'm extremely proud of the end result. It looks absolutely amazing and it truly was a model maker's dream with all the, the detail that we could put into it. And I really hope that the fans enjoy it. Seeing Helm's Deep as a collectible 
obviously can't not make me feel both proud and somewhat reminiscent of the days over 20 years ago where we were building that beautiful large-scale miniature, filming on the set, being there with the actors. You know, these are special memories, powerful memories, memories that I'll keep for the whole of my life. And the ability over 20 years later to be able to make these beautiful moments captured within these oval bases that represent these memories is incredibly powerful and very special to me. It actually somewhat quite emotional.